Lomography have just released a brand new film, Lomochrome Color 92. I've already published one video on this channel about this brand new color negative film. I did a little review and I showed you over 30 images shot with my Olympus Pen FT. But in this video, I'm gonna be comparing Color 92 against another color film in Lomography Stable, Color Negative 400. To do this, I shot a series of images side by side in two of my favorite point and shoots. In one corner, we have the Contax T3 loaded up with Lomography Color Negative 400 film, one of my favorite combinations. On the Lomography 400 box, it says made in the USA, so this is a Kodak film. In the other corner, we have the Fujifilm Class S loaded up with Color 92. Now the Class S has the ability for you to set the ISO speed of your film in the camera. So this is perfect as Color 92 has no DX code. The Color 92 film box has a Made in China sticker covering up the original printing on the box which says Made in Germany. And if you'd like more information on what I think's happened there, make sure you check out that first video. So it's likely that what we're actually doing here is comparing the latest European color negative film with good old made in the USA film. Now both of these point and shoots are exceptional. They produce fantastic results. The lenses are sharp, the metering is accurate. So any differences you see here are likely to be down to the film choice. A couple of years ago, I actually shot a whole roll of C200 in both of these cameras side by side. And when I looked at the results, it was actually quite difficult for me to tell which camera was which. The only sort of giveaway was the obvious one in that the Contax T3 has a 35 millimeter focal length and the Class S has a 38 millimeter focal length. The Class S is more of a photographer's camera. There are lots more features and menus there. So you can sort of change little things here and there, which is pretty cool. However, the Contax T3, it just has a certain minimalist magic. I love it. Now, after I finished shooting these two rolls, I sent them down to Ikigai Film Lab in Melbourne. They processed and scanned the film for me. And they also did these amazing contact sheets. First up, we have the contact sheet for the Contax T3 Lomography Color Negative 400. Colors look bright and rich and vibrant. They look spot on. And here's the one for the Class S Color 92 combo. Everything looks a little bit blue. The colors look a bit more muted, but overall it does look pretty good. The other thing to note is that there's nothing in the film rebate there. Very interesting. So the first image here, we'll look at the Contax T3 with Lomo Color Negative 400 first. So look at this. This is a little garage here in Cleveland. I've shot this numerous times before. I love this place. It looks really old, old school and cool. And to me, like this could be back in the 70s or 80s. It looks fantastic. So yeah, I really like this. I really love this combination of the Contax T3 and Lomography Color Negative 400 film, that Made in the USA film. And then let's have a look at the next one, which is the Class S with the Lomo Color 92 film in. Very similar scene here, a little bit tighter cropped because it is a 38 millimeter lens. I don't think I, I moved back to compensate for that in this picture. But yeah, like the colors look a little bit flat and there's definitely a kind of a blue cast to the image there. I'll actually show you on a few of these images, I'll actually warm them up for you in Lightroom and show you what the difference is there if you wanna do a bit of post-processing on your roll of Color 92. The next image is a close up of this Datsun. I love this Datsun. It used to be Datsuns everywhere when I was a kid. Now there's not many about at all, but you can sort of look at this image here. You can sort of really see lots of nice detail here. Beautiful colors, really rich yellows and oranges and greens. Really love that. And then let's have a look at the one with color 92. It just looks a bit dull and a bit flat, doesn't it? Now, like I said, I've actually warmed this one up. So if you have a look at this image here, it does look a, a little bit better when it's been warmed up. All I did was I went into the image in Lightroom and instead of choosing the white balance as shot, I changed it to auto and it's immediately added some warmth back in there. Now you can go and do whatever you want to your film images. I just did this as a very quick sort of fix to show you the difference between the, the blue sort of cast and what Lightroom thinks should be the auto white balance. Now, one thing I wanna show you at this stage is just the extra detail that you get with the color negative 400 film. That is the Kodak made in the USA film. So for example, look at the tire here on the car. You can clearly see the word Dunlop, the tire manufacturer on the wheel there. You can't see that. 
on the Color 92 shot. You just can't see it at all. So it's really interesting. And the next shot here, I've got a, another comparison here. It's just the front of the car there. You can sort of see the, the grill. Is it called the grill? I'm not very good with cars. But you can sort of see quite a lot of detail in the Lomography for Color 400 shot. The grill looks beautiful. Lots of nice details and colors and stuff there. And when you look at the Color 92 shot, it's a bit of a grainy kind of mess. There's, there's nowhere near as much detail on to the next image, and we're still here in Cleveland. There's a nice house here with a picket fence and what I think is a mango tree. And so yeah, the, the T3 and color negative 400's done a great job there. When you look at the, the next image here though, yeah, it just looks a little bit blue. There's a bit of a blue cast there with the color 92. You know, there's still quite a bit of detail in there, so I think it's done a fairly good job. The greens look pretty lush, but yeah, I think I, I, think I prefer the color 400 on that one. The next image is my faithful pooch, Marshall Dalmatian. He's actually here in the sofa watching me, wondering why I'm talking to myself. But he looks absolutely fantastic here. Look at those colors, the, the reds and the greens there. And then in the next image here, yeah. I mean, the, the detail's pretty good, but yeah, it's just not a match for the first one really, is it? And again, you've got that kind of blue cast to the image. So we're still in the backyard for the next photo. It is my beautiful daughter. She looks amazing here, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I really love this shot. I really like the sort of yellows of her sort of skin tone are nice and golden with the afternoon light. And then there's the blue gray of the background of the fence there. I really love this image. I think she looks fantastic. She hasn't really given me permission to put this in the video, but I don't care, she's beautiful. And um, yeah, she doesn't watch my channel anyway, so hopefully she'll never find out. Then in the next image here, taken on the class S with color 92, same sort of image, it's just quite blue and sort of flat, isn't it? Now this is another one that I warmed up. So here is the color 92 one but I've put the auto white balance on in Lightroom. And yeah, it definitely improves it a little bit there. It kind of does look a little bit retro and a little bit aged kind of film, doesn't it? And this is one thing I recently said in my Substack. I have a photography newsletter, mattlovescameras.substack.com. Make sure you get on there and sign up to the free weekly or weekly-ish photography newsletter. But one thing that sort of was a bit of a revelation to me after I published the first video is that to me, Color 92 is kind of like a fresh film that looks like an expired film. That's one of the things that I, I didn't say in the first video, but I thought of afterwards. And yeah, when you, especially when you warm the images up here in Lightroom, and take it away from that blue cast to sort of a more natural looking photo, it does look like an expired film, even though it's fresh film. The next image is in Brisbane City. There's a fancy office building here. And this is where I took the espresso machine shot, if you remember from my first video, the beautiful green cups and the green espresso machine, the same building. And I really like this, it's got some nice foliage and lights there and it looks really good. The Contax T3, super sharp lens, I really love that. And then the next image here taken with the Class S, yeah, very similar. It actually looks really quite nice indoors. The greens look different, a bit more muted, but they, I don't know, they have a kind of a richness to them. So yeah, the greens look especially good on Color 92. So I really do like that image there. I think I took this in the middle of the Queen Street Mall in Brisbane, the main street. Nice, rich, vibrant colors here. And then the next one, yeah, they just look a little bit, I don't know, the, I guess because the main, the main subject here is the colorful flowers, they just look a bit muted. Whereas I think if there were more greens in the image, like if green was more a dominant color, I think it probably would have looked better because the color 92 does seem to sort of render greens really nicely. Now we're in a cafe, I'm getting my weekend coffee fix here. This was uh, John Mills himself, a really good cafe in Brisbane, really recommend it, great little place. And so in John Mills himself, uh, it's actually quite nice and bright in there, but I sort of metered for those like globes there and the window, and so everything looks kind of in darkness there. But the Contax T3 has done a great job, it looks really good. The next one from the Class S and Color 92, it looks really good as well, but you can just notice the difference in that light coming from the windows. Look, the, the Contax T3 one with color negative 400 is kind of a yellow light, and the color 92 one with the Class S is just more of a blue light. Now around the corner, we're at another cafe. It's an espresso sign, and I'm a, I'm a sucker for a neon sign, what can I say? So with the T3 and color negative 400, here is the espresso sign. Looks fantastic, there's a nice glow to it. There's quite a nice bit of detail and pipes and sort of you know concrete around that image. But if we look at the next one from color 92, the Class S, it's, it's just a sign. Like There's no extra detail there. So coming back to that image I showed you earlier of the car tire, you know, with the, the Contax T3 and the Color Negative 400 made in the USA film, you can see details in the shadows. But here with the Color 92, it, it's just kind of like you can't 
always see that much detail in the shadows of the film, which is kind of interesting. The next shot is St. Stephen's Cathedral in the middle of Brisbane. I always love taking this shot because you've got the old building, well, old for Australia, old building next to all the modern buildings. So this shot's pretty, pretty nice. And then you've got, once again, you've got the, the image there from the Class S with Color 92. However, look at the image once you warm it up a bit. Again, it does sort of look a bit better with it's been warmed up in Lightroom. If we look at these two images side by side in Lightroom, you can just see so much more detail in the image taken with the Contax T3 with color negative 400. There's so much detail there in the church and the bricks and all that. Now I did shoot color 92 in the class S at ISO 400, but you know, this lack of detail in the shadows, does this point to the fact that it's not actually a 400 speed film? Maybe I should have shot this at 250 or 320 or something like that. Two final images from Brisbane City. We've got the Anzac Memorial. This is opposite Central Station, and this is off the Eternal Flame, and there's like a memorial to all of the, the people, the, all the Australians who fought and died in wars all around the world. And yeah, my grandfather's fought in the war, so I really like this place. I always think of them when I go there. The composition is terrible. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Maybe I just moved slightly when I was taking the photo, but the columns are all off center. And the next one here is the one of the Color 92 in the Class S. Yeah, it just looks dull. Again, I've warmed this one up and it does look a bit better. So that's an interesting thing. You know, if you are shooting Color 92 outdoors, you might want to warm those images up just in Lightroom play around with the slider and see if they look a bit better afterwards. Coming out of Central Station, I took the next shot. It's a picture of some trains here, sort of waiting to sort of take off. Is that the right word, take off, to glide off? I don't know what the right words are, but you got some nice uh, First Nations art on the trains here. There's a real pop of color with those trains. They look great. But in the Color 92 shot, I don't know, they just look a bit meh. They just don't look great at all, do they? And two images to finish off at Wynnum on Brisbane's Bayside. So the first one is of the, I guess the pier or jetty you'd say at Wynnum. And yeah, this is quite late at the evening. I think the sun had already gone down. You've got those nice peachy kind of blue colors on the sunset there. And then you've got the one from color 92, which actually looks pretty good. I mean, the colors aren't as bright or rich, but I think it looks all right. And the final image, I showed you this image in the first video as well. So this one here is the outdoor pool, like the seawater pool. Uh, they've kind of drained it though for winter. So it's just sand at the moment. And there's just a bit of playground equipment giving you a pop of color there. And then you've got the other one from the Class S with color 92. It looks okay, it just doesn't look quite as bright or quite as interesting. So there you go, what did you think of the images shot on Lomography's Color Negative 400 film and Lomography's Lomachrome Color 92 film? I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below with your thoughts. For me, if we're talking about quality, if we're talking about grain, if we're talking about colors, there really is no comparison. Lomography's Made in the USA Color Negative 400 film is vastly superior. It's a film that I would shoot with all day, every day. For example, here's a contact sheet of a roll that I shot in Japan in April. This film just looks amazing. It looks fantastic and it's a real go-to film for me. In fact, quite a few of the images in my latest zine were taken on Color Negative 400, including these two. And if you'd like to find out more about the zine, head along to mattlovescameras.com where you can buy yourself a copy. Now, while I prefer Color Negative 400, I do think it's fantastic that other films are coming into the market. I think Color 92 is a welcome addition. To me, it is a bit more of a specialty film alongside Turquoise and Purple and Metropolis. It's a fun film that I would shoot now and again. And certainly if I have a camera which has light leaks or a camera that can do double exposures, I would not hesitate to shoot Color 92 in one of those cameras for a bit of fun. As I said earlier, Color 92 is a fresh film with an expired film look. So if that's your jam, get onto their website and get a few rolls today. Anyway, that's it for this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I've got one more Color 92 video coming up. I also shot a roll in my Fujifilm Natura at ISO 1600 and I asked my lab to push it two stops. So that will be coming hopefully in the next week.